Okay, in this video I want to talk about uh, basically finding the formula for a piecewise function um, just based on its graph. I, I did one where I had the function and then I graphed it, um, but I've had a lot of people asking me how you go back the other direction. So um, <clears throat> here's here's my example again, forgive my, my poor artistry. Um, so, okay, so I tried to fill in the endpoints. So <clears throat> open circle, this is the point negative 6, 2, and then this is the point negative 2, 2, again open circle, so this is supposed to be a flat line. We've got a little V-shaped graph in the middle. Um, the left end point's negative 2, 0, then it goes to 0, negative 2, and then it goes to 2, 0. And then I have a straight line from uh, that, that starts at 2, 4 and stops at the point 6, 0. Um, <clears throat> in general, you know, I'm kind of picking simple functions, straight lines for the most part. Um, you know, this is a pretty deep, this is kind of a hard question in general. If you just have some arbitrary graph, how do you come up with a, a, a function, a formula for that, for that graph? And that's kind of a deeper question. So, <clears throat> um, in general, I'm going to assume that people are, that are asking these are probably, probably have simple, simple graphs to deal with. Um, Okay, so <clears throat> the way that we're going to do this, um, okay, so so f of x, it looks like I'm going to have three separate parts because, well, I've got three, you know, I've got the straight line part, I've got the v part, and then I've got another straight line part. So that to me would suggest um, there's probably three different functions, three different formulas that I'm going to have to use. So there's my horrible little bracket. <clears throat> Remember, a horizontal line has the equation y equals something, and it's y equals basically whatever the y coordinates are. So notice um, it starts at, at a height of 2 and it extends over to a height of 2. So this is simply the line y equals 2. So we don't write the y equals. That's kind of what the f of x is for. f of x is the same thing as y. So it says y equals 2. And then we have to make a restriction, though, on the x-coordinates. OK? Whoops. So notice the smallest x-coordinate that gets used for the, linear, for the straight line part is negative 6. But Actually, we don't use that. There's an open circle, so that's why we'll make it strictly greater than in this case. Okay? If there's an open circle, you're going to use either greater than or less than. If the circles are filled in, you use greater than or equal to or less than or equal to. Okay, so it says it goes from negative 6 up to an x-coordinate of negative 2. So it says it looks like the flat line y equals 2 between the x-coordinates of negative 6 and negative 2, and that's what we have. OK, to get the middle part, um, the middle part, if you haven't seen this before, um, the graph of absolute, basically the graph that looks like a v, that's the, the form, that's the function absolute value of x. But absolute value of x normally starts at the origin, at 0, 0. And notice now it looks like that absolute value got shifted down two units. And normally it just keeps on going forever, but here's ours got chopped up. So we'll have to take that, in, that into consideration as well. So I know it looks like the graph of absolute value of x, but again, remember, if you, if you haven't seen this, um, these are considered graph transformations. And it says if you shift a graph vertically down two units, you just take the original graph and you would subtract two from it. Okay, so that'll give me the formula of the middle part, the, the V-shaped part. And again, I have to sandwich x between a couple, a couple values. And again, since they're solid on either point, I know I'm going to use greater than or equal to and less than or equal to. So for the V, the smallest x-coordinate that gets used is negative 2. The largest x-coordinate that gets used is positive 2. OK, so now for the last part, um, where I've got a straight line here, this one will have to work a little bit um, harder to figure out. So remember the equation of a line, we can use point-slope formula. And point-slope formula says we take y minus y1 equals the slope x minus x1. And I can pick either one of these points to, to fill into this. Okay. Well, first off, I, ha I have to figure out my slope. 
Well, remember slope, we do change in y, so I'll take 4 minus 0. So the chain, we have to subtract the exponents over the change in x, 2 minus 6. So I get 4 over negative 4, where it says the slope of my line is negative 1. Okay, so I'm going to plug in that slope of negative 1. And I can pick either one of these points that I want to use. To, to I can either plug in 2 as my x sub 1 and 4 as my y sub 1, or I can pick 6 to be my x coordinate and 0 to be my y coordinate. And I think I'll probably use the 6 comma 0 because I think that'll just make things a touch easier. Okay, so I'm going to pick on this point on the right hand side. Again, I plug in x sub 1 as being 6. I'll plug in y sub 1 as being the value 0. So it says we get the equation y minus 0 equals negative 1 times x minus the x coordinate, which is 6. And equivalently, well, y minus 0 is just y. If we distribute, we'll get negative x plus 6. Okay, and remember, if you put it in mx plus b form, this is going to be your y-intercept uh, of 6. And, it, it, you know, it's getting close to, to 6, so that seems plausible. And remember, if it's negative in front of the x, it has a negative slope, so it points down. So this seems like a reasonable answer. Again, you could have used 2 as x sub 1, 4 as y sub 1. Um, at the end, though, you want to have the y isolated. This is going to be important because once you have the y isolated, whatever's left over to the right-hand side, the negative x plus 6, that's what you put inside of your formula. Okay, So it says that we're going to have to plug in negative x plus 6. So negative x plus 6. And again, now I have to think, what x-coordinates am I using? What x-coordinates am I using? Since it's an open circle on the left side of my graph, I use strictly greater than. And it says the smallest x-coordinate that goes with the line is the x-coordinate of 2. Well, the right side's actually solid, the endpoint, so I should use less than or equal to. And again, I think what's the smallest x-coordinate? the smallest x-coordinate is 6. And now I have got a nice piecewise defined function um, that coincides with my graph. Okay, so again, um, a little tricky, a little tedious. Um, again, if these um, you know, if these cur if these lines were more curvy, um, you know, and they didn't tell you that, hey, it's an exponential or it's quadratic or it's this or it's that, um, it becomes really hard to actually decide what types of functions to use. Um, but uh, you know, here this is the basic idea: we have lines um, and absolute values, so we can use those. Um, so I hope this example makes some sense. Um, if not. Uh, feel free to post questions and uh, hopefully either me or somebody else can help you out.